students a very good morning uh, today we will have second session of our online tutorial that is nothing but online class pct unit 1 python revision tour uh, in the first revision in the first class we have seen about python revision tour and we have seen uh, getting started with python and uh, who developed python and uh, on what scenario he gave that name and how many different ways to work in python basic program also right so we'll see furthermore about python revision tool in this class in this session now uh, in this class we'll see about python fundamentals and data handling yeah in the, in the previous session again in the python fundamentals we have also seen a basic program with bare bones of python fundamentals yeah so what all it contains uh, can you just recapitulate yeah so it will contain a function expression statement comments blocks indentation yeah so all these are the base bare bones of a python program that is nothing but bare bones is nothing but the skeleton of a python program yeah so in this session we will see python fundamentals again here you as you can see my screen so these are all the topics which we are going to learn today our topic is again python revision tour that is nothing but unit 1 and learning objectives will be we'll see python character set what are tokens keywords literals operators comments variables and assignments dynamic typing and how to see read numbers and how to print the particular sentence or expression or particular statement in a console yeah so we'll start so the first thing is python character set yeah so also i have made this word document so that it will be easy for you all to write the notes yeah python character set as you can see it is a set of valid characters that a language can recognize and what all we have seen letters digits special symbols white spaces other characters do you remember we have seen uh, what are the valid identifiers how we can write like what are the different steps to write a particular valid identifier name so all this comes under python character set only so what are letters it will accept lower case a to z and upper case a to z digits will be 0 to 9 and special symbols will be space plus minus into by double into double into is nothing but exponent So slash backslash again, and brackets, square brackets, flower brackets, and so on. And also, you can say these flower brackets, square brackets as punctuators. Also, we'll see about the topic in further topics. White spaces again, blank space, tabs. You will have shortcuts on your keyboard. If you can see, you'll have backspace, tab again, one tab equal to five spaces. Carriage return, new line, form field, like which are the shortcut keys, which will have uh, like if you click uh, tab, so it will automatically take five spaces, right? You don't have to enter five spaces, so like that. And other characters are nothing but you can process all ASCII and Unicode characters as well. Now again, what is ASCII and what is Unicode? ASCII, American Standard Code for Information Interchange, and Unicode. the unicode is nothing but a unique character unique number given to every character no matter what the platform is what the language is and what the system it is using right so again what do you mean by platform we have discussed in the previous session platform is nothing but operating system that means unicode will support all the platforms whether it may be windows mac or unix okay so again we'll go to the next topic what is token what is a token smallest individual unit in your program is called a unit as a token so we'll see an example so what is a token if i'm writing a equal to 5 plus a equal to b plus c if i'm writing this now here a b c are nothing but variable tokens and then p 
equal to comma plus these are called assignment tokens assignment operator tokens okay so by this you can see that if you write a sentence any expression any value or assign any value to any variable each and every bit is considered as a token now how many tokens i have here in a equal to b plus c i have five tokens total a b c are variables equal to and plus are assignment operators clear yeah. so we we'll move on to how many types of tokens we have we have keywords identifiers literals operators and punctuators now again what do you mean by keywords this is very important we have seen uh, difference between keywords and identifiers also which we will discuss further so what is a keyword all the data types which have special meaning and also all the conditional statements loops or statements which have special meaning so what do you mean by data types again int float double string all these are data types that means when you say a keyword it will have a special meaning to it right okay are you able to see my screen yeah so when i say keywords that means they'll have a special meaning which only that language compiler or interpreter will understand so can you use uh, keywords as identifiers one basic question you will get it no so the answer is no you cannot use keywords as your identifiers why because keywords are already given some special meaning which only it will serve only that purpose like if you are using data types if i am writing int a equal to 5 that means i am clearly telling my interpreter that my variable a will consist only 5 that is integer data type clear yeah, so that will be easily understood by your interpreter so i can't uh, use int int equal to 5 so my compiler or interpreter will get confused like which is a identifier and which is a keyword okay so we'll see what is a identifier also so what is an identifier identifier is nothing but building blocks of a program now what do you mean by building blocks of a program as i said when it comes to identifiers int a equal to 5 if i am giving it like this so my keyword here is int my variable here is a and value is 5 okay or i, I can simply write int a assume my variable is a of integer data type so here i can say a is my identifier and int is my keyword so am i clear now so all the different parts of a program where you give variable names object names class functions list dictionaries all are called as identifiers so we will see the basic rules of identif identifiers as well so it should not begin with it should not begin with digits first thing identifiers should always begin with letters and even underscore also because underscore is considered as a letter and upper case and lower case are treated separately why because python is case sensitive now again what do you mean by case sensitive means if i write capital int and small int it will consider both as separately now if i'm writing like this this is considered as the keyword whereas this is considered as identifier or variable name because your interpreter will only understand lower case int data type and it will treat this upper case int as identifier right so and again it will accept 0 to 9 uh, digits but it should not start with a digit okay you can start with underscore 0 my file example okay so and identifiers can be of unlimited length this case sensitive yeah and it should not be a keyword as we have already said mm. yeah and literals now literals are nothing but anything that have a fixed value 
Now, what do you mean by fixed value? It is nothing but their value cannot be changed throughout the program run. So, when I am giving my value as 5, so it will be the same and throughout my execution of my program. That is a literal. So, how many types of literals I have? String, numeric, boolean, special literal none and literal collections. Now, what do you mean by string? String is nothing but sequence of characters enclosed in quotations whether it may be single quotation or double quotations or if it is starting with single quotation it should end with single quotation if it is starting with double quotation it should end with double quotation only okay so it is a sequence of characters enclosed in quotations now it will python also accepts all non graphic characters now what do you mean by non graphic characters in previous um, topic, we have discussed about special symbols like uh, white spaces, carriage return, tab, blank space, right? So, Python supports all these types. Those are nothing but white spaces. Like, we have got different escape sequences and their meaning and what non-graphic character it will do, right? So, double backslash is nothing but backslash, slash quotation is nothing but single quotation and also here backslash will not be counted when it comes to string counting, right? Here one character count is one, ca one. so if you write slash a, the don't count it slash as separately and a as separately, the entire count is one only. Slash backslash is considered as escape sequence character. So here are a few examples and what function it does. And please note down this in your notes and tabulate it. Clear? And so here what string literals? We come to numeric literals. Now what do you mean by numeric literals? Anything which is of numeric data type, nothing but integer, float, complex, boolean. Now what do you mean, oh, now you, you may see on my screen that is int signed integers float floating point real values. Now what do you mean by signed, nothing but positive and negative, signed and unsigned and float floating point real values are nothing but uh, when you have a integer value with decimal point with it. So that is nothing but float, okay. Now here difference between int and float, int will not have decimal points, whereas float will have decimal points. And coming to complex, complex is nothing but when you have 3i plus j, nothing but an imaginary part which we, which, our, which we don't know the value of it, that is nothing but complex. And boolean literals, booleans are nothing but, whether, like, you know very well, 0 and 1, nothing but false and true. Right. So again, we'll see the subtypes of integer literals now. Yeah. So it will allow three types of integer literals, and we have seen decimal, octal, hexadecimal also in the previous grade. Right. Anything which will not start with zero is decimal, and anything which will start with zero is called octal and anything sequence which start with 0x is called as hexadecimal integer right yeah and decimal as you know its base will be 10 and octal base will be 8 hexadecimal base will be 16 and floating point next is floating point i'm sorry i've scrolled down floating point so what is what do you mean by floating point as we have already discussed it will have fractional part so real literals are the numbers having fractional parts fractional parts are nothing but whether it may be signed or unsigned as we have discussed in integer literals right it may also have plus or minus sign before it and what do you mean by exponent form now we have seen this exponent form using various examples in the previous grade now see here this example 5.8 can be written as 0 0.58 into 10 power 1 see i am moving my 5 to right side and multiplying it with 10 
which means it is nothing but 5.8 only ultimately my 0.58 into 10 power 1 will lead to 5.8 only why i am doing this because 10 power 1 whole thing is called e01 so here my exponent will be e01 so the mantissa part is 0.58 that is appearing before e and the exponent part is 1 clear am i clear yeah so uh, that's why i gave this example also in boolean literals as we have already seen there will be two only that is true or false right true is nothing but one and false is nothing but zero especially literal none yeah so when i read any value when i try to take any input value but i don't pass any value to it at that time special literal none will be considered as a input right and that doesn't mean null okay some none value is nothing but you are indicating absence of value to that particular variable right so indirectly you are telling you won't get your proper output so usually you will check where your input has gone wrong you will try to fix it try to give some value to it right and next is operators yeah. So operators are nothing but anything that triggers some computation when applied to variables and other objects in an expression. I think you might have got this by heart all this because we have uh, studied these definitions n number of times. Operators are nothing but which will trigger some computation between variables or objects or an expression. Nothing but what is triggering is performing. If I am writing, again I take an example a equal to b plus c. So, b plus c value is assigned to a, right? Yeah. So, again we have types of operators here, unary and binary. Unary is nothing but, and again I will just give this example. When you are writing this, can you see here, I am doing operation between two variables. Right? and I am assigning to one variable. So I can tell this as binary operator. Why? Because when I am having more operands, that is operands are nothing but, again don't think this as a new word, operands are nothing but A, B, C, nothing but variables. These are operands plus is operator equal to is operator. Yeah. So, this can be given as example for binary operator. And when it comes to, can you give what the opposite thing is, when you have only one operand to operate upon, is nothing but unary operator. Unary plus, unary minus, bitwise and logical negation. So, next will be binary operator which we have already seen. So, you can see, you must be very well known with all these terminologies arithmetic operators bitwise shift identity relational operators and uh, logical operators yeah. also you will be having membership operators that is in and not in we will discuss when it comes to data handling yeah. again what do you mean by binary operators when you have two operands to operate upon right when you are adding two numbers or two variables and assigning a value to next next variable yeah and uh, you can perform arithmetic that is plus minus into division reminder exponent float division bitwise bitwise and bitwise exclusive or bitwise or again we have seen what is bitwise operators also shift left shift right identity operators is is not identity operators we have seen using python shell examples also like if Japan is in Japan, is is nothing but we check the truth value of it. That's it. Is not will check the truth value whether it is not in the same expression or not. And relational operators you know very well less than, greater than, less than, equal to, greater than, equal to, equal to, equal to, not equal to. Now here we got one more assignment operators. We have seen first assignment operator in our example equal to and by equal to plus equal to. You can see all these as you can give examples as um, 
augmented assignment operators as well. In the last year, we have seen so many Python output predictions where we have seen a equal to a plus like this. Okay, I will just write down here. importance when written in a sequence or a sentence or expression yeah so when it comes to comments in the previous session i hope you remember what are comments comments are nothing but these are additional information which will not be rendered by your interpreter or which will not be interpreted by your interpreter right so we have seen enough of information in the previous session if you want you can just go back to that video you can just see what are comments Okay, and what do you use the symbol hash? Multi-line comments. So multi-line comments, uh, hash will be given only for single line, right? If you want to uh, give three lines or four lines of additional information, but every time you should not put hash. So there is one more way that is nothing but triple quoted multi-line strings. So when you are writing your, let's see one example. So when you are writing Usually what do you write for comments? This is online class 2. So this is for single line comment. Now when I am writing it for multi line. So I just write. So, you can see here, I am writing here 
a triple quotes to show my multi line comments. So, the one and the same thing he has mentioned over here, right? So, what are variables and assignments? Now, what is a variable? Variable is nothing but it represents named storage location that refers to a value and which can be used throughout program run. Now, as we have seen here, a equal to 5. Now, here my variable is a and 5 is my value. So, a is a named location for which 5 is assigned and it will be the same throughout my program run. So, that is nothing but variable and 5 is my assigning value to it. So, multiple assignments. Multiple assignments are nothing but you can see here example wonderfully they have given here a equal to b equal to c equal to 10. That is nothing but all three values uh, assignment value is 10 only. Instead of writing a equal to 10, b equal to 10, c equal to 10, they have given here in a single line. That is nothing but multiple assignment. Now again you can give in a single value. Now you want different values. Here different variables. You can write it like this. X, Y, X, Y, Z equal to 10, 20, 30. Now your interpreter will easily identify Z value is 30. Right? So this, this is multiple assignments. Now when it comes to dynamic typing. Yeah, this is very important. What do you mean by dynamic typing? Now first we learn what is the difference between static and dynamic. So what do you mean by static? Anything which won't change, it remains as it is, it is nothing but static. So what do you mean by dynamic? In our terminology, when it comes to programming terminology, dynamic or in usual terminology also, dynamic is nothing but changing, adapting, right? So when it comes to dynamic typing, now see here, when I am writing my x value as 10, which is nothing but integer value, I am printing it. Now, when I am writing my x value again as string, again I am printing it, you won't get any error. Why? Because your 10 by x value is 10, which is in some other memory location. And again, your x value is hello world, which is in some other location as well. So, that is print x. Now, here it is printing mistake, it is small x only. Okay. So, usually in other programming languages like C++ and Java, you will get error, overwriting error because you have already used x variable and assigned 10 value to it. Now, you can't use again string value to it, but in Python, you won't get because it will store in separate memory locations and you can print happily, print x in the first statement, you will get 10, the second print statement, you will get hello world. Clear? So, welcome to the final topic of uh, Python fundamentals, simple input and output. Input and output. And now, what do you mean by input and output? Reading values is nothing but input and the basic function is input function. So, as we have seen, int a equal to input like that. So, we have used input function to take our input, right? And for output, what we have used? Print, reading numbers. So, we will see one example for this also. So, don't worry. And reading numbers is nothing but reading is nothing but taking inputs. Taking or assigning any value to your input is nothing but reading values, okay? <coughs> As we have, we are saying it as reading numbers. Uh, string values cannot be used for arithmetic or other numeric operations, which is pretty common because we can't uh, add string and uh, integer. You'll get an error. Yeah, output through print statement. Yeah. So don't think as we have got input for input statements, so output for output statements. No, we'll have a separate function called print statement which will help you see your outputs in your Python IDLE console, right? Whether it may be IDLE or like shell or anaconda spider. Yeah, so print function will enable you to view your output in your console. 
So shall we see one example? We have have uh, print statements, three print statements. We have also have separator here, end here. Now what do you mean by separator? Separator is nothing but when you are writing any value, when you are printing any statement, you are telling that after each and every quotations, you should have this kind of separator. Whether it may be dots as they have mentioned here, or whether it may be and percent or comma, anything it may be. So my name is Amit. Everything is separated with dots, right? So shall we see the same example in IDLE? will be took a separator like this which whichever you have mentioned here and what do you mean by end now what do you mean by end end is nothing but when you are giving two statements or three print statements and you want those to be printed in the same line after each line you want that end character to be printed like this see now i have given two print statements here print my name is amit end equal to dollar in the second statement print i am 16 years old so you have got two print statements your output will be given as my name is amit dollar and i am 16 years old right you want me to show that also we'll see because as this is ideally we'll go to new file so we'll use script mode for this Yeah. 
this point, right? So here we will wind up our class, and the next topics are uh, data handling, and we will see when I thought I covered this this class, but no, this took so long. So we will just recapitulate whatever we have seen. So Python revision tour, online class two. So in this we have seen only Python fundamentals, not data handling. So we will just remove this data handling again. It will take time. We will see in the next class. So learning objectives, nothing yet. These are all these are keywords also. So that's why I have not mentioned them separately. And uh, so what is Python character set? Any characters, digits, blank spaces, and white spaces. All those comes under character sets. Now what do you mean by token? Tokens are nothing but smallest individual unit that is nothing but a token what are keywords keywords are special reserved words and uh, what do you mean by identifiers here we have got one more thing that is identifiers what do you mean by identifiers these are building blocks of a program and uh, one important thing is keywords should not should not be written as identifiers and vice versa now what do you mean by literals? Anything which have fixed value. In literals again we have seen string, numeric, uh, boolean, special literal none and also literal collections and operators. Operators are nothing but anything that triggers some computation. Now we have seen unary, binary operators also. Unary is nothing but only one operand and one operator and the binary operators in binary operators you have two operands in which computation will be going on again in that we have arithmetic operators membership operators identity operators bitwise operators shift operators logical operators relational operators and what do you mean by comments comments are additional information given to user uh, it is only for his understanding purpose in single line, we will give it as hash. In multi line comments, we will use triple quotations. Now, what do you mean by variable and assignments? Variables and assignments are nothing but when you. Variable is nothing but a named memory location. And you are assigning some value to your variable is nothing but assignment. Now, dynamic typing. Dynamic typing is nothing but when you give a variable an integer value and you print it. When you override it with some other uh, string value, you won't get any error because both will be printed separately because both both of them have different memory locations. And we have seen simple input output also. So input will be used uh, for reading inputs using input function and output will be used for using print functions. And also we have seen what are separators what are end values right so this was today's class hope you understood each and everything and also i will mail this notes to you which we which i have made this so that it will be easy for you to write your notes okay meanwhile you will be receiving your worksheet also by end of this topic by end of python revision tour okay so if you have any doubts anywhere please uh, write down your doubts in your notes and you can ask me later.